Hey everyone, welcome to another Easy Way tutorial. Uh, this video I'm going to give you some tips and tricks on some GarageBand settings and how to get started in creating your own music. So let's get started. So for this video I'm going to click the Loops button and we're going to hit Choose. Uh, so again, this screen is important. You want to make sure you know where you're saving your project. So by default, GarageBand chooses your music folder. Uh, so you want to make sure you know where you're saving it, if you save it somewhere else, and just give it a proper name. So again, when you open GarageBand, um, this is the window you're going to see. So in the left-hand side, you're going to see all your tracks. In the middle is your timeline. So you can see the bars up here in your timeline. Uh, and then your editing and your loops are over here in the right side. Uh, and your timeline at the bottom here. So before we even get started, before we start recording or playing around with loops, uh, the first thing I want to show you guys is GarageBand Preferences. So this is where you're going to make sure you want to have your, if you're just using the Mac sound card, your built-in uh, input and output so you could hear and record your sounds. And then you just want to make sure if you're using an external sound card that it's showing up in this list so you have it selected. So the most important thing I want to show you in the preferences is under the advanced tab uh, and it's under audio resolution. So by default GarageBand puts it at good, uh, I guess to save file space, stuff like that. Um, but I'm telling you guys, put it on best. So this is going to give you the best quality possible uh, for recording and for exporting your songs later. Uh, so I just want to make sure that you guys have this set up first before you start doing anything. That way you're at the best quality possible. Yeah, your file sizes are going to be a little bit larger, but it'll be worth it in the end because you'll have the best quality possible uh, with your file. So that's it for preferences. So now that we have that out of the way, we can start creating some music. So the first thing I'm going to show you are uh, loops and how to bring them in and edit them. Um, so I'm just going to bring in a real simple drum loop here. So you probably notice that clicking, um, that's our metronome. Right now, by default, GarageBand turns your metronome on, which is down here in your transport bar. Uh, you may like it, you may not like it. When you're recording and you have nothing to reference, you're recording to your tempo, you're going to want the metronome on, so you have something to record to to keep everything in time. Um, but when you're bringing in loops first, especially if you're building up your song from scratch, uh, you're probably going to start with drums, bass, and then start your recording. So if you're recording guitars or vocals, things like that, you at least have a starting point uh, to reference to. So you may or may not want the metronome depending on what you're doing. Um, so for this purpose, I'm just going to turn it off so that we don't hear it. So now if I go back to the beginning... We don't hear it. So you'll notice over here in the loop section, uh, there's two different styles of loops. There's the green box, which is a MIDI file, which means you can edit individual notes, uh, which can be really useful, and I'll show you that a little bit later on. Uh, and the other one is the audio file loop, which is shown here in the blue uh, box with the little waveform. Um, so that it's also a loop, but it's an audio file, so it's a little bit more difficult to manipulate and to move around and pitch shift and all of those kind of things. So now that the loop is in our timeline, there's a few different things that we can do with it. So the very basic things we can do with it is copy and paste it. So if it's a loop we like uh, and we want it to be longer, I just want to make sure it's selected by single clicking it. Uh, and then I can do Command C for copy. And then I'm going to want to place my playhead where I want to paste it. So I'm just going to place it at the end of my first loop. Command V to paste. So now it's copied an exact copy. Um, right after the first loop. So I can continue to do that to make this uh, loop a lot longer. The other way, and I'm just highlighting and hitting delete now to get rid of those, um, is when I put my mouse at the top right corner of the loop, I have an icon that shows up. Um, and if I click and drag, this will also duplicate my loop. And again, depending on how long I want it in my timeline. Um, I can click and drag 
and I can also make it shorter that way. So just depending on what style you, how you want to duplicate this loop, if you want to duplicate it, uh, there's a couple ways to do it like that. So the other thing you can do with this loop, um, you can place your playhead anywhere on the file here. And then by hitting Command T, it'll split the file where your playhead is. Uh, so if I move my playhead over here, Command T, it'll split or cut exactly where the playhead is. So you can move these around now individually, uh, or you can delete just by hitting delete. So like I said earlier, um, we can now edit this file. Individual notes can be edited uh, because it's a MIDI file. And so there's a few different ways to get to the editor. I can either double click on the file that I want to see, or I can come down here and hit the scissor tool, which will bring up our editor window here now. And then I just want to scroll down so that I can see the individual notes. So these are the MIDI notes that we can edit. So I'll just play it so that you can see what it looks like. So those are all the notes that are making up the beat. If I click on the piano, I can hear the actual instrument that's being used. And depending on what note I hit, it's playing a different note on the drum kit that we have loaded up here. So I can take an individual note, change it from a kick to a snare if I want. Uh, I can make all of these kick drum sounds into a snare sound. So again, a lot of options that uh, you can have here in the editor. Uh, you could also make these notes longer or shorter. So if I hover my mouse at the end of the note, I can just drag it shorter or longer. So velocity is going to make your sound a little more human. What velocity does is determines how hard or how soft the instrument was hit. So if you want your note to sound like it was hit harder, just increase the velocity. So now it sounds like it was hit a lot harder than when it's lower. So going back to the timeline now, uh, another thing I want to show you guys is being able to loop your song. Uh, so right now when I hit play, the playhead just continues going, but I want to hear this looped over and over again. So when I select the loop button, the yellow bar shows up on the timeline here. Uh, so this is going to indicate where the loop point is, where it begins and where it ends. So again, this can be dragged to how long or how short you want it. So because my sound file is only two bars long, I'm going to drag it to the two bar point. And then when I hit play, the song will just loop over and over again, uh, which is perfect because that helps when you are trying to edit and add more uh, elements to your song so you can hear it over and over again uh, without having to hit stop and rewind and play and all those things. So over here we have our track section. This is our track volume. So depending on how loud or how quiet we want this track to be. So th this track, meaning anything that's on this line, will be affected by that volume. And then if we click this button down, we get a little more advanced features. So track volume, if I turn this on, this line shows up now and now I can automate my volume for this track. So this is a useful tool when you want to start automating uh, your individual tracks. So under track volume, if I come over here and I can click on this line, I can now start to manipulate the audio. Do a little fade out in the middle of the track there. And then if we listen back, and if you watch the volume fader here, it's automatically adjusting the volume for you. Uh, so again, very helpful when you start adding more tracks to the song. You may want one part or a solo to be louder than the rest of the song, so you can automate it to turn up uh, or down. And then the more advanced you get, the more different features you can add and automate as well. So now we're ready to export our song. So there's a few different options. You can come up here to share. 
and I'm just going to save it to the hard drive. So export song to disk. So by default, GarageBand wants you to compress the song uh, to MP3 format. Um, but I just want you guys to know that if you don't compress the song, uh, it's going to export the song in its original quality. So again, remember when we set the preferences to the best quality possible, uh, it'll export a high quality audio file that's not compressed um, and giving you the best possible quality of your song. However, you may sometimes want just an MP3 so you can email it or share it or put it on your phone, that kind of thing. So you may want to compress, but just be aware that if you don't compress, you'll get the top quality file possible. So if you do compress, uh, I recommend the MP3 encoder, and then I recommend going to custom, making it 320, and then just making sure this is on the highest setting, and then uh, you're ready to export.